afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We are here again at the Kanbis Cricket Academy, and uh, today we had uh, our own Rakip Patel, the director of uh, the academy, uh, having a batting masterclass with us. And Rakip Patel is uh, the current captain for the national team, Kenya national team. Um, Rakip Patel, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Rakip, before we, we move on to the technical part, uh, I'd like to know the process. You've played a lot of cricket, you've played international cricket, you've uh, played uh, World Cups and you've played the local league as well. So is there a difference in, uh, in the process playing the international cricket and uh, the local leagues? Not really. Uh, I, the way I train, uh, it's just uh, the way I play and I think uh, what I'm doing in the past 10 years that's what what I'm doing at the moment it's just that I worked very hard in my first 10 years where I could uh, gauge myself and that's the same training which I do which keeps me going I think at the international level and I take the league games as the same as the international level I try to give my best and play the, the situations accordingly the way I play in the national team okay Rakan okay. I think is very different to different people. Uh, talking about different people, Steve Smith, uh, perfectionist, textbook cricket, and Virat Kohli, his own brand, his own style of batting. You know, they're totally two different ends. What do you think about batting and how should one approach batting? I just think uh, they're both uh, different. Uh, even uh, the style of play is very different. But the main thing which is important is the head. I think the head is where it's still and it's uh, if you say the contact point for the boat it's the same position even if Steve Smith moves around a lot but if you if you freeze the videos where Coley uh, and uh, Smith end up at the last moment where the delivery is done I think the head position is the main I think it's, it's still and it's very straight and that is where our cricket is all about even bowling and batting if the head is in the right position you will end up playing uh, good cricket or maybe all your shots will be easy. Rakip, um, their viewers, their kids, their parents were watching and uh, can you show us, talking about the head, you know, can you show us a bit how, um, what do you mean by that? More still, rather than moving around, you have a still head, you will be able to judge the line easier and play the shots whichever you want, but the still head, the better. You talked about the posture and having a steel head. There's one more thing. Uh, even if batsmen have that, the older players are different. So I want to know, the players want to know about the limitation. You know, uh, what role does it take? What abilities and limitations do to a batsman? Personally, if I talk about myself, I think sometimes you just need to know your limits as there are some shots which are not gifted to you. So those are the shots you don't try early on on the innings and there are some shots which are very uh, natural to you and which uh, gives you an inning to go. Uh, it gets easier for you when you play such shots. So I think uh, it's limitations but you have to think that some shots are not made for you as everyone has a different technique and some shots are easier for some people and some are not for you. Yeah, so well you just heard it, you know, the kids at home if you see IPL and the big leagues, uh, what they are doing there is not what you can do. So, you know, don't just replicate stuff. Um, you have to go to your coaches and uh, know your abilities and you should know what is good for you and what is good for you early on in the innings. Okay, Rakip, we've talked about limitations and all that and uh, posture and all that. So, what shot do you want these kids to have in their armory? You know, one shot that should be there uh, for them to bat. Personally, I feel I think if they can master the defense shot, I think we all need that one shot where you just need to take a time. I think we all have the shots, but we don't have the defense. And there are good balls which are getting players out. If we can defend them out, we will have more longer innings rather than this uh, 30, 40 runs uh, innings, which is not good enough for a team. When you have a defense, that 30-40 runs will turn into hundreds 
and those hundreds will turn into 150s, which is which will benefit the team. Yeah, so you just had it. Defense is a shot. Lots of people might have thought, you know, hitting sixes and fours is what we call shots. But uh, our masterclass uh, batsman, betting masterclass coach has said defense is part of a shot. Rakyat, I think there is a forward defense and a back foot defense. I would like you to show the kids about the forward defensive shot and the back, back foot defensive. The way I said that your head has to be forward when you're playing any shot and uh, even defense, your head has to be in, this, in the position you want and defend it in the line. So you're playing the ball under your eye and you're letting the ball come to you rather than there, you going for it. And same for the deep, back foot defense shot. It's the same. Keep your head forward and just stay there and play it under your eyes. When you play it under your eyes, you have control over it. And when you play it in front or behind your head, you don't have control over the head. So make sure that you're putting your weight forward and playing the back foot shot under your eyes. Rakip, we've talked about a shot, a defensive shot, but I've played. Uh, Lots of cricket with you in the same team. I've been watching you. And there's one shot I admire you playing the sweep shot and the lap paddle and the lap shots and all that, which is a big armory for you. But I will, I will want, and uh, the kids at home will want to know about the, the shot and what, what it helps, you know, how it helps your innings. Yeah, paddled again. Very mindful and aware of the field placing, and he's just placed this one ah. down to four. Yeah, I think. Uh, that's a shot where I back myself 110%. Uh, but it comes with the pitches. I think uh, the, the way the pitch is playing, Nairobi usually turn, and the spinners keep on bowling stump to stump. So it's a, it's a shot where you have to have it just to rotate the strike. Yes, it's a boundary shot, but sometimes it's good to, for you to have that shot to rotate the strike and be on the other side so you can play a longer inning. And it's about changing the field as well. So if, if I have a, if I don't have a 45 and I can pedal it, there's a player from on the offside might come on the leg side where I just played that shot and I'll have an open area on the offside. So I'm just playing around with the field and trying to get those runs out of the ball instead of just blocking or defending. Yes, defending is part of the game, but T20 and 50 overs, rotating strike is important as well. Defending. You are defending with some intent, but you are getting those singles as well. If you defend, you might get a single somewhere here, so you are just playing around with the field as well. Oh, so you just heard it. Rakip does that to get under the skin of the opponent captain. He just manipulates uh, fields with that shot. So the lap paddles and sweep shots, the kids at home will want to know uh, how we go about it. You know the technical parts. Uh, it, it, it involves a lot of technical parts. Playing the sweep shot is not an easy shot. Can we see a few lap shots with uh, the technical parts? When you wait toward, towards the bowler, so if I want to sweep, I would say maybe it should be somewhere a good length for a spinner. And the head should always be forward and you can just go down on your knees, make sure your leg is going straight and your hands up. So it's easier for you to play it or slap it. And the same shot, I can open the face and it will go on the paddle side. So, on the same shot as well, I can slog sweep it. So the position stays the same, but you can play three different shots. You can sweep it, you can paddle it, and you can slog sweep it. Well, um, you just uh, saw what Rakeb said about uh, the lap shots and the paddles and the sweep shots. And, uh, Rakeb, one more thing. Even if you have all that in your armory, there's this batting fitness, you know, lots of people don't consider that. They think fitness is all about bowling, pace bowling or fielding. But there is batting fitness as well, which people take for granted. Can, can, can you talk to the kids about the batting fitness? First, I think it starts with the fitness. I think I'm not the fastest, but I do my fitness uh, daily. I try to do some laps on my, on, on my, on my time. And I think uh, it's something uh, it helps you so you can play a longer inning. Then comes the batting fitness, which is like you hitting balls in the nets, not getting tired of hitting only 30, 40 balls. You have to hit at least 300, 400 balls a day, which will help you to be up there rather than just 
you know that one ball which will get you out. A batsman has only one ball to get out, and the bowlers have like 60 balls to bowl at you as a bowler. So it's that one chance you just have to you have to try and remove it that you can you can always be on top of your game. So fitness, batting fitness is important as well as fitness itself is very important for your mental strength. Scoring hundreds is not easy. You have to be fit. Batting fitness is very important. That's why you will see batsmen, they look good till 40, 50 runs, then they get tired and they get out playing a lazy shot or playing a, a shot in the air and they get out. So those are the, those are the signs of showing that you are you're getting tired. That's why you're taking the easy way out. So you just heard it from the master here, the batting master. We've now known why batsmen score the hard runs, the hard 30, 40 runs or 50 runs and end up throwing their wicket. It's all about fitness, batting fitness. Well, Rakep, after talking about the batting fitness, there's one more aspect to the batting uh, part. I've seen lots of youngsters, even uh, someone like me, I would want to be. You know, when you're not getting the runs, and you just go to the nets and you just start hitting like you add your balls instead of 50 balls you're hitting 100 balls you know you're just working that extra uh, part you know because mentally you know you're not scoring runs so how much is the mental and how do you prepare for that i just think uh, runs is something and it's not much that you get it every time and mentally i think yes it does play a part but you have to keep on doing the same things what you've been doing when you are scoring and always remembering the innings you've played before to keep on uh, thinking about them and try and implement the same things you do. Every game has a different situation when you go batting, but it's how you take it. And mentally, you have to be strong. Those uh, balls you are hitting should never let you uh, think that you're not getting runs. It will pay off. It will pay off. You just need to keep on doing the hard work. And batting is something that if you don't do the hard work, you will always struggle. So hitting balls is one thing you have to keep on doing and going to the game just keep your head clear that see ball, hit ball because you've already trained for it. If you, if you think about yourself that I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not scoring, I'm not playing this shot well, it will pay in your mind. So it's just you to go and let your instincts take over and you'll score. So you just heard it, it's the process, you have to follow the process whether you're scoring or not. You have to trust your process and keep your head clean and clear when you're going to bat. Well, uh, kids, uh, parents, you've just had uh, Rakeb showing a lot of tips. And uh, before we had this interview, there were some fans, the kids who were here, they were big fans of their coach Rakeb. And they sent me, they gave me a question, they wanted me to ask Rakeb a question. Rakeb, your fans, uh, these kids, Ask me to ask you, you are a six hitting machine. We know I've played with you, I've been playing with you and I admire you hitting those big, big sixes. And uh, they're asking, was it always like that or you evolved over time? And uh, do you like uh, smacking the bowlers far uh, out of the park? Fantastic commitment to that. Committed himself to the stroke and he's put it away magnificently for six. So not really. it's, it's not for, uh, it's not something that it came naturally. Uh, it's uh, when I started playing, I started playing as a top order and slowly I couldn't perform at what I could. So I ended up batting at two, three. Then slowly, slowly at the national team, I started batting at five. And it, at batting at five, you have to finish games. And this is where I started learning how to hit sixes and be consistent at it. It's not a must that you hit every ball for a six, but like sometimes you just need one six every over and you can have that run, run rate go up, up. And nowadays T20 and the way we play 50 overs, you have to have that one really short. And I think uh, it's something uh, I have to work really hard on. It doesn't come easy at, at all, but it's, it's something that, if, as I said, with the batting, the more you do, you get better at it. And I think it's what I've done for the last 
20 years and it's paying off now and understanding the situation yes six hitting is easy but if you don't understand the situation and you just go and want to hit every ball it doesn't make sense but it's when you want to hit it and that's the main part and i think it's what for the youngsters to understand that six hitting doesn't come easy but the ground shots very important build the inning first then look to hit at the end you know they're kids and they love watching those sixes that's why maybe they ask that question let me ask you is it fun or not hitting the bowlers around it is fun but it's even uh, it's even tiring waiting for the ball when it's gone so far <laughs> he just heard it from Rakyat. He is the one who throws the ball out of the park. Then he is telling us it's so tiry waiting for another ball. <laughs> well, Rakyat, that was the fun part and we enjoyed having you here. But I'm not letting you go just like that. I want to get deeper into Rakyat Patel. What is the betting mantra of Rakyat Patel? I think uh, for me, it's about challenge. I think I like challenges when the situation is hard. That's where I want to stand out. And it, it's not much that it has to happen all the time. It's just that I want to give 100% for the team. And I always keep the team before my individual goals. I hardly have individual goals, but I want to keep the goals for my team in front. And that's what makes me play for the team. And uh, those situations are where I take them as a challenge for myself. And that's my mantra for I think, I think. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard it from the master himself, Rakya Patel. A Kenyan legend, a Kenyan national team uh, captain. Thank you very much, Rakya Patel, for uh, sharing all that with us.